Why are you diminishing our running start and making it more crooked? I don't get it. I made it straighter. The tires are not even aligned now, and you, and you diminished our okay, running start. I want you to look. You're, this was way over there. I just pivoted it this way. I did straighten it up. I got a good idea. You might have a good idea. That was my idea, but he is negating that I'm idea. I'm negating it. I need to straighten it out. No. no. We can steer that. We're just going to push it on. Forward and, and let us hit some speed. Thank you. Hey, listen to somebody else for a change. Yep. And we're done. X5 power. What's up guys? I am the 50s kid. The new project has arrived, the X3. I know it looks pretty bad, but don't worry. This one's gonna get professionally painted, not by me. So that's gonna be all good. What we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna change the head gasket on it. So that's gonna be the first project. The previous owner of this car already tried to do that and he gave up halfway through. So basically what he's done is he's removed the valve cover and he's removed the intake manifold. And then obviously all the other like usual sus suspects, which on this car are identical it's it's almost identical to the e46 i mean it is identical let's just say it so um if you have this problem yourself and you have to do you know you have to rebuild your head gasket all you basically have to do first is those two things you got to remove the valve cover you got to remove the intake manifold so i have videos on how to do that on an e46 all you have to do is follow those so i will link those into the description also up on the screen right here also, if you haven't seen the introduction to this project, uh, which you know was probably posted a week ago, I will also link to that as well. There's going to be a playlist for everything in this series on just how to rebuild or how to how to change your head gasket after you encounter like a an overheat situation, which I'm sure is what happened to this car. I don't know that that's what happened, but I'm sure that's what happened because that's what happens to all of them. You know the. Uh, Something goes wrong with the cooling system, the expansion tank cracks, it overheats, and all of a sudden you got a warped head, you got a bad head gasket, you possibly, almost certainly have, uh, the, the head studs have pulled the threads out of the block because it's an aluminum block, so it just pulls the threads out. So what we're probably going to have to do is install time certs, which are metal sleeves that we're going to drill out the holes, we're going to install the time certs, and we're going to glue them in and uh, everything will be all good. Then we'll just kind of reassemble everything and it'll be really good to go. So uh, let's get started. So this is the way the car came to me. Like I said, the guy started the job and then he gave up on it halfway through. Uh, check out my intro video on this if you haven't seen that yet. So you can just see kind of what the whole car looks like and why we're doing this job. There's enough money in this job, I think, to, uh, to, to justify all the work I'm going to put into this. It's really somewhat simple and I'm doing this video for you guys that have this similar situation where you've overheated your car, you now think you need a rebuild for whatever reason, maybe you're getting coolant leakage, maybe your compression is gone or, or really bad, whatever, you know, whatever the case is, you need to get the head off, okay? So like I said, check out my previous, previous videos on how to remove the intake manifold and how to remove the valve cover gasket real or the valve cover real simple to do and then you can just kind of catch yourself up with where we are in this build now what I'm going to do is remove the head and like I said the hardest part is just getting the exhaust manifolds off which is right down here it's really sort of hard to get at these bolts down onto this side uh, so that's going to be the hardest thing the only thing we're gonna to need to do after that is we just gotta take the timing components off and then take the head studs out and that's it, the thing comes out. Now in this situation where you've reheated or where you've overheated, like I said, it tends to warp the heads. Okay, so imagine the head right here. Normally it's flat, it's gonna warp like this. So there's gonna be a hump in the middle. I'll show you how to check for that. If it's, you know, if the head didn't really warp that badly, then you can get away with just putting it back on and changing the head gasket. If it didn't warp, then it probably didn't crack. And you can just kind of get away with putting it right back on there and, 
you know, it's a pretty simple kind of cheap fix. The, the head gasket's about 40 to 60 bucks. You might need to replace this, the hard tube that goes into the side of the, the head depends on the age of your car. You probably will have to replace it because uh, it likes to crumble where it goes into the side of the head right there. But other than that, it's, uh, it's really not that gonna be that expensive. And it's it, really the expense comes in what other parts haven't you changed? What do you wanna change? What do you wanna do while you're in here? Have you rebuilt your Vanos yet? If not, you wanna do that. Replace a lot of your cooling components, especially if you overheated, you know, something happened with your cooling system, address your cooling system and replace all the parts there. So that's where the things start to add up. But the head gasket itself, is actually pretty cheap. So like I said, we're gonna do this on a budget. This is a car that we're going to sell. So I don't intend to do a full rebuild like I did on my E46. This is just pull the head out, assess the damage, possibly take it to the machine shop. I already talked to the guy, you know, he'll clean it, he'll resurface it, he'll pressure test it for about $140, which is I think a pretty good kind of typical price. That's probably what you should expect to pay. I'm not going to have them do a valve job on it because I don't really think there's much of a point. Um, unless what happened with this engine is that it got a burnt valve or something, it's all going to depend on what the damage was, you know? But if I'm assuming that this, this car overheated and that the valves are fine. So I'll figure that out once I take it off. But you know, I'm not going to pay for a valve job because there's really probably no point unless something went particularly wrong. So if something didn't go wrong, no valve job. I don't need to spend that extra money. I'm obviously not going to take the whole block out like I did on my rebuild. That's just way too much work to put into this. It's just a head gasket. So that's what we're going to do. So right now I'm going to work on getting the exhaust manifolds off. So what I did on my E46 video was I removed the AC hose right here. And that just gave me a lot more room to kind of get the ratchet in and work down in here. That was, you know, that was super helpful. But it looks like on this one, there's just a little bit more room to work right here. Um, so it looks like I may be able to sort of slip the ratchet in right here. I'm not worried about the top bolts. Those are kind of easy to get at. They're just here, here, here. So those are, those are pretty easy to get at. It's the ones that are underneath that are the problem. So the ones that are over top are fine. The ones that are underneath are much harder to get. And I want to try to get them all from above up here. It is possible. It's even possible on an E46. It's just, you know, you're struggling more. On an E46, I just get at them from underneath. I just go down on the ground. The problem with this is that this is a four wheel drive vehicle and this one has a bigger uh, subframe underneath it. So I don't know if this one has the same kind of access. I haven't actually gotten under it yet. I don't know if this one has the same kind of access from underneath, but I think I'm gonna try to do it from up above here just cause I've got, got a little bit of room here. So already I found something I don't like. I found this milky substance in the lower radiator hose, which was already taken off. And so it's kinda, it's kinda dripped out most of it. Some of it is still in there. Yeah, it's just a weird milky substance. A lot of it's dripped down on the ground. What is that? That is weird. What, what could that be? Is that oil mixed in with the coolant? Is that what happened with uh, when this thing had the incident that it had? I don't know. That's pretty strange. So I think what that means is we're definitely taking out this radiator and uh, cleaning it out because I don't want that in the system, you know? So already I'm not too happy with, um, you know, doing the exhaust bolts on this car. Yeah, I mean, that line is gonna be in the way for a couple of them. It's just, <laughs> it's gonna take forever if I do it that way. It's super awkward. There's a way to cheat doing this, um, especially if you have a cherry picker, you know, um, what you can do, and I've done this in the junkyard, is you can just lift up, you can just unbolt everything, unbolt the head and everything, and um, unbolt the exhaust manifolds from the rest of the exhaust. And you can just sort of lift up the whole entire head with like the cherry picker. And that'll give you really nice, easy access to the, to the bolts on the exhaust manifold. And you can just get those right off because the thing's just kind of hovering up here in the air. I don't have my cherry picker anymore. We got rid of that. That's back to who I borrowed it from. But I do have my engine support bar. 
and I can just kind of string that over towards the middle and I can just use that to just sort of raise the exhaust manifold or the, the whole um, cylinder head up and that will give me nice access to the exhaust bolt. So I think I'm going to do it that way, guys. Um, not that you can't do it the normal way and just kind of get the exhaust manifolds out and not, you know, the normal way as you saw in my, in my last rebuild series. If you want to see how to do it that way, I'll point you to those videos, but I'm going to do it this way in this video, just again, to, to do it a different way, to show you a different way to, of doing things and to just make it easier on myself. So right now I'm going to remove the Vanos unit. It's just, you know, six bolts, six 10 millimeter, six 10 millimeter bolts all around. And then the two Torx bolts in the center right here. So that'll pop off. And, uh, and then we'll just get the timing components off. And then we will get the, ex the cylinder head unbolted. So that's what was in that lower radiator hose. Kind of ew. The rest of that oil is actually from the, uh, the Vanos unit when I unbolted it. Forgot to have a towel under it. And as you can see, we have uncovered our timing gears and stuff. The Vanos is off. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to actually put this thing in top dead center and we want to slip our, our lock pin um, in the hole and it slips through the, uh, the flywheel. So um, that is actually, that pin comes with your timing kit. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is your timing kit for your M54, M52 TU engines. Um, this is just the cheap Chinesium kit. From either 110 to 150 bucks, uh, there are problems with it. The, the thread on this is not really machined properly, although it does bolt in. I think the thread is actually, uh, is a little different than it needs to be. And it doesn't like screw in all the way, but it's still, it, it's enough to hold it in place and then it'll let you, to allow you to screw that in. So this is the tensioner mechanism. Uh, this is the alignment plate. And this is a little jig that it comes with for you to align the, the gears with the, with the chain that we were just looking at. This lets you sort of align them, get the initial alignment on. They placed this pin in the wrong spot. It's a little bit too far this way and it should be a little more this way. I think what I'm going to do is actually modify my jig so that it's, uh, it's proper. Everything else with it works though. And this is that pin I was talking about comes with it. We're going to slip that in and that's going to lock us into top dead center. So if you look underneath the starter, you see that little blue thing? That's a little cover. It's a little cap that's sort of capping off the hole, kind of keeping dirt out of it. So there's a little hole in the side of that blue thing. So we should be able to slip a screwdriver down through that hole, pull it back, get that out of there. Before we do that, we need to get the engine into top dead center. And I've just got a little dowel ride rod right here stuck into the number one cylinder. And what we're going to do is bar the engine over. You just need a, like a breaker bar or preferably a long ratchet. That's so much easier uh, with a 22 millimeter socket on it. And you just go ahead and go onto the, the crank bolt. And obviously you got to take the fan out first. So we're just going to bar this over. You see how that's going down. And now it's coming back up. Now, how do you know if you are on the, uh, the compression stroke or the exhaust stroke? Well, right here, the cam lobes. You can see how these two cam lobes are facing each other. They're facing inward. That's where you want to have them. It, when we had this 180 degrees the other way, the cam lobes were pointing in different directions. So. We're just going to adjust this and we're going to slip the uh, locking pin in down below. I used a little right angle pick to kind of get down in there, hook that and pull it back off. There's just a little lip around the, the edge of it that you got to pull it off. So I just sprayed some PB blaster down in there and then that pin just kind of slipped right in. Now I heard it right then. I heard it kind of bang up against the, uh, the flywheel. What you want to do is get your, your pick or your small screwdriver on it so that you can kind of push it forward. And what we need to do is turn the engine until we kind of find that, that locking spot. You'll hear when it goes in and it'll lock things and you won't be able to move it any further. I can sort of feel the whole 
as, as I move it back and forth here. And we're just not quite slipping into it. Did I slip into it there? Might have. No. Wow, that's kind of funny. See, right here, we might want to get a breaker bar so that I don't have to keep, you know, reaching down and flipping the ratchet the other way. In this case, a traditional old breaker bar might be the way to go. See, now we can just sort of go back and forth like that. There. I felt it slide forward. So now I can't go either way. So now we are locked. So that's what you have to do. You have to feel, feel it until you just slip it all the way forward. You, you'll feel it slip sort of a, a half inch forward. That's how you know you've got it. Also how you know is you try to move the breaker bar back and forth and the thing won't move anymore because it's locked. So we didn't necessarily need to do that yet. We could have taken the head off without locking that pin in place. Don't think that if you forgot to put that pin in that you're screwed somehow. It really doesn't matter. If you have the head off, you'll see when number one piston is at the top or at the bottom. And uh, all you have to do is just move the engine around until you, you get there. And again, all you gotta do is slip that lock pin in, but it's just kind of helpful. It's, it's, help, it, you know, it's helpful in the procedure, particularly if you are not gonna do anything with your head, if you're not going to uh, take it to a machine shop or anything like that, and you're just, you plan to just take the head off and put it right back on, the head will be in proper position, the cams will be where they're supposed to be, everything will be fine. So, you know, that's kinda what you wanna do. When you're going to retime the engine, you're gonna put the lock blocks on the back right here. And as you can see, the, the camshafts are a little off right now. I think it's because I was, moving the engine around a little bit there uh, with the Vanos unit off, which you should never do if you are planning on keeping your timing in place. Since I was always gonna retime this, it just didn't matter, but these little cones will like pop out and slip off a, a tooth or two. So uh, as you can see, we're locked in top dead, or, or top dead position, um, number one top dead position. These are supposed to be parallel to the surface of this. And this one is, this one's in good time right here. This one I can tell is, tilted this way so our timing's already off uh, but you know you would just uh, that's what you need to do when retiming your the engine so we'll cover all that once we come to reinstalling the head and everything the next step from here is to remove the timing components we've got six nuts there's three here three here they're 10 mil nuts then there are three I believe these are e10 torx bolts then we're going to need to remove the timing tensioner so there's going to be a 10 mil here two right here and one right here. That'll remove the, temp the tensioner. We're gonna need to remove the guide. There are gonna be, I believe, two tens. I'll go over that again once we get to that point. And then we'll, we'll need to remove more bolts from here and here. So uh, I'm just gonna remove the, the timing components right now. Now, I, I highly suggest, if you have the, the timing kit that I have, to just carefully remove these sprockets, both of these sprockets together with the chain and just kind of keep them in the position, oriented in the, in the position that they're in. And in fact, when we get to that point, I think I'm gonna show you what to do. So here, let me, I'm gonna take off these bolts, I'm gonna take off the cover plates, and then I think I'll show you what to do. So I've got just those six mil nuts off, and over here we've got this little spring plate. Now, you're gonna have two plates. These are the first two things that come off. This one has, a, this is a timing wheel, okay? And the way you keep that straight is that you can see the camshaft position sensor is right here. You can see there's another timing wheel back here. It looks the same, it's just got, you know, it's got a half moon shape right here. So that one is right in front of that cam position sensor right there. This one, this one goes on this side because the exhaust cam position sensor is part of the Vanos unit and it sticks in right here. So when this is right here, it's kind of detecting it. So that's how you remember that. But what I highly suggest is that you find a place to lay these things out, just a nice clear table to lay these things out in order, the right on the right, the left on the left. That way you just know the order when you're putting it back on. It just makes it that much easier. So we're gonna have another little plate right here and yet another one. 
right here, a little spacer. Obviously the magnet helps. These are E8s guys, that's my mistake, but they come off next. This is another thing that comes with the timing kit. It's a little lock pin. It's for this tensioner right here. There's a little hole right behind and it just slips in and locks the tensioner down. So now we can go ahead and remove these inner cogs with the chain. And what we're just gonna do is we're going to just keep the orientation the same. We're gonna, we're just gonna do it like this, okay? This way you don't need an alignment jig. If you just take it off that way and keep it this way, this is, this is what you need, okay? Now to make sure that this doesn't get jostled around and get messed up, I'm just gonna put some zip ties in between these holes in the chain, just kind of zip tie it on. And uh, that way we don't really need the locking jig or the alignment jig. So this is what I was talking about when I said that my alignment jig just wasn't properly made. You can see how this pin is supposed to align right there, but that pin is just positioned way incorrectly. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably draw the part of the pin that's good with, my, with a marker, and then I'm gonna grind off all the, the stuff that uh, needs to be ground off. So there we go, fixed now. I just ground off half the pin basically, or maybe one third of the pin. And now it's uh, lined perfectly. So I don't really need these zip ties, but I'll keep them on there anyway. So this is as far as you need to go with this side, with this particular camshaft. Don't take these bolts out. You don't need to remove the string. You don't need to, you just don't need to. Everything is done over here. Um, I've got that tensioner out of there and I took one other ring off already. These are 13 mils. Actually, I think these might've been 12s. Yeah, I think those are 12s. <clears throat> so before we try to mess with this and get that out, we gotta get this little, this little guide out of here. So there are gonna be two uh, E8 bolts and this camshaft, we're gonna have to twist this camshaft slightly this way. You can see this one's, it's not aligned where it should be. So if you look down the side of that camshaft, you can see there's an E8 bolt in there but this camshaft, it's sort of cocked, sort of at an angle. It should be turned a little bit counterclockwise. The reason it's not good is because, like I said, it's tilted this way. You can see how that back is not parallel. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do is turn the camshaft. And the way you do that is actually pretty simple. There are these little hex, this little hex right here. You need a 24 mil wrench or, you know, something probably a, a crescent wrench should do. And if we just move that and sort of make it parallel, we'll be able to get access to that bolt and we'll be able to pull the bolt out. And then the other bolt is right down there. You need to physically take the bolt out with a magnet and get it past, past the camshaft. Otherwise you won't be able to maneuver the guide out because you saw how long that bolt was because you gotta tilt the guide sort of this way to get it out. That's why. And last but not least, we're gonna get this sprocket off. And we probably should have taken out the uh, chain tensioner first. In fact, we, we definitely should have. So I'm gonna unbolt the tensioner down here first. Forgot about that. But I think on this one, that uh, AC hose is actually gonna be in the way so we can't use a socket. So I think instead I'm going to use my pliers wrench. Okay. And there it is. There is our tensioner. Okay. Now we can get this sprocket off of here and we'll just have to lift the chain a little. Shimmy it off. So there were two more E8 bolts on either side, the longer one goes over here, shorter one over there. So those are just right in the front there. Gotta get those out. 